The Parthenon is a temple on the Athenian Acropolis, Greece, dedicated to the goddess Athena, whom the people of Athens considered their patron. Its construction began in 447 BC when the Athenian Empire was at the height of its power. It was completed in 438 BC, although decoration of the building continued until 432 BC. It is the most important surviving building of classical Greece, generally considered the culmination of the development of the Doric order. Its decorative sculptures are considered some of the high points of Greek art. The Parthenon is regarded as an enduring symbol of ancient Greece, Athenian democracy, Western civilization and one of the world's greatest cultural monuments. The Greek Ministry of Culture is currently carrying out a program of selective restoration and reconstruction to ensure the stability of the partially ruined structure. The Parthenon itself replaced an older temple of Athena, which historians call the Pre-Parthenon or Older Parthenon that was destroyed in the Persian invasion of 480 BC. The temple is archaeoastronomically aligned to the Hyades. Like most Greek temples, the Parthenon was used as a treasury. For a time, it also served as the treasury of the Delian League, which later became the Athenian Empire. In the 5th century AD, the Parthenon was converted into a Christian church dedicated to the Virgin Mary. After the Ottoman conquest, it was turned into a mosque in the early 1460s. On September 26, 1687, an Ottoman ammunition dump inside the building was ignited by Venetian bombardment. The resulting explosion severely damaged the Parthenon and its sculptures. In 1806, Thomas Bruce, seventh Earl of Elgin removed some of the surviving sculptures, with the permission of the Ottoman Empire. These sculptures now known as the Elgin Marbles or the Parthenon Marbles, were sold in 1816 to the British Museum in London, where they are now displayed. Since 1983, the Greek government has been committed to the return of the sculptures to Greece. Etymology, the origin of the Parthenon's name is from the Greek word I euro I plus or minus I I I micron I one half I one half which referred to the unmarried women's apartments in a house and in the Parthenon's case seems to have been used at first only for a particular room of the temple. It is debated which room this is and how the room acquired its name. The Liddell Scott Jones Greek English lexicon states that this room was the western cell of the Parthenon. Jamori D. Green holds that the Parthenon was the room in which the peplos presented to Athena at the Panathenaic festival was woven by the Erephroi a group of four young girls chosen to serve Athena each year. Christopher Pelling asserts that Athena Parthenos may have constituted a discrete cult of Athena, intimately connected with, but not identical to, that of Athena Polias. According to this theory, the name of Parthenon means the temple of the virgin goddess, and refers to the cult of Athena Parthenos that was associated with the temple. The epithet Partha copyright knows, whose origin is also unclear, meant maiden, girl, but also virgin, unmarried woman, and was especially used for Artemis, the goddess of wild animals, the hunt, and vegetation, and for Athena, the goddess of strategy and tactics, handicraft, and practical reason. It has also been suggested that the name of the temple alludes to the maidens, whose supreme sacrifice guaranteed the safety of the city. The first instance in which Parthenon definitely refers to the entire building is found in the 4th century BC orator Demosthenes. In 5th century building accounts, the structure is simply called Honors. The architects Mnesicles and Callicrates are said to have called the building Hecatempodos in their lost treatise on Athenian architecture, and, in the 4th century and later, the building was referred to as the Hecatompedos or the Hecatompedon as well as the Parthenon. The 1st century AD writer Plutarch referred to the building as the Hecatompedon Parthenon. Because the Parthenon was dedicated to Greek goddess Athena, it has sometimes been referred to as the Temple of Minerva, the Roman name for Athena, particularly during the 19th century. Function Although the Parthenon is architecturally a temple and is usually called so, it is not really one in the conventional sense of the word. A small shrine has been excavated within the building on the site of an older sanctuary probably dedicated to Athena as a way to get closer to the goddess, but the Parthenon never hosted the cult of Athena Polias, patron of Athens, the cult image, 
which was bathed in the sea and to which was presented the peplos, was in a livewood kshonen, located at an older altar on the northern side of the Acropolis. The colossal statue of Athena by Phidias was not related to any cult and never inspired any recorded religious fervor. It did not seem to have any priestess, altar nor cult name. According to Thucydides, Pericles once referred to the statue as a gold reserve, stressing that it contained forty talents of pure gold and it was all removable. The Athenian statesman thus implies that the metal, obtained from contemporary coinage, could be used again without any impiety. The Parthenon should then be viewed as a grand setting for the votive statue of Phidias rather than a cult site. It is said in many writings of the Greeks that there were many treasures stored inside, such as Persian swords, and small statue figures made of precious metals. Early History, Older Parthenon The first endeavor to build a sanctuary for Athena Parthenus on the site of the present Parthenon was begun shortly after the Battle of Marathon upon a muscular limestone foundation that extended and leveled the southern part of the Acropolis summit. This building replaced a hecatompodon and would have stood beside the archaic temple dedicated to Athena Polias. The older or pre-Parthenon, as it is frequently referred to, was still under construction when the Persians sacked the city in 480 BC and razed the Acropolis. The existence of the Proto-Parthenon and its destruction were known from Herodotus, and the drums of its columns were plainly visible built into the curtain wall north of the Erechtheum. Further material evidence of this structure was revealed with the excavations of Painagetis Cavadias of 1885 a Euro-90. The findings of this dig allowed Wilhelm Dahr Paragraph of PFELD, then director of the German Archaeological Institute, to assert that there existed a distinct substructure to the original Parthenon, called Parthenon I by Dahr Paragraph of PFELD, not immediately below the present edifice as had been previously assumed. Dar paragraph of PFELD's observation was that the three steps of the first Parthenon consisted of two steps of porous limestone, the same as the foundations, and a top step of Kara limestone that was covered by the lowest step of the Periclean Parthenon. This platform was smaller and slightly to the north of the final Parthenon, indicating that it was built for a wholly different building, now wholly covered over. This picture was somewhat complicated by the publication of the final report on the 1885 Euro-90 excavations, indicating that the substructure was contemporary with the Comonian walls, and implying a later date for the first temple. If the original Parthenon was indeed destroyed in 480, it invites the question of why the site was left a ruin for 33 years. One argument involves the oath sworn by the Greek allies before the Battle of Plataea in 479 BC declaring that the sanctuaries destroyed by the Persians would not be rebuilt, an oath from which the Athenians were only absolved with the Peace of Callias in 450. The mundane fact of the cost of reconstructing Athens after the Persian sack is at least as likely a cause. However, the excavations of Bert Hodgehill led him to propose the existence of a second Parthenon begun in the period of Cimon after 468 BC. Hill claimed that the Kara limestone step Dar paragraph a PFELD thought was the highest of Parthenon I was in fact the lowest of the three steps of Parthenon II, whose stylobate dimensions Hill calculated at 23.51 by 66.888 meters. One difficulty in dating the Proto-Parthenon is that at the time of the 1885 excavation the archaeological method of seriation was not fully developed. The careless digging and refilling of the site led to a loss of much valuable information. An attempt to make sense of the potsherds found on the Acropolis came with a two-volume study by Greif and Langlotz published 1925 a Euro 33. This inspired American archaeologist William Bell Dinsmo to attempt to supply limiting dates for the temple platform and the five walls hidden under the re-terracing of the Acropolis. Dinsmo concluded that the latest possible date for Parthenon I was no earlier 495 BC, contradicting the early date given by Dar paragraph of PFELD. Further Dinsmo denied that there were two proto-Parthenons, and that the only pre periclean temple was what our paragraph a PFELD referred to as Parthenon II. Dinsmo and our paragraph a PFELD exchanged views in the American Journal of Archaeology in 1935. Present building, in the mid-5th century BC, 
when the Athenian Acropolis became the seat of the Delian League and Athens was the greatest cultural centre of its time, Pericles initiated an ambitious building project that lasted the entire second half of the century. The most important buildings visible on the Acropolis today are Euro the Parthenon, the Propylaea, the Erechtheion and the Temple of Athena and Ikea Euro were erected during this period. The Parthenon was built under the general supervision of the artist Phidias, who also had charge of the sculptural decoration. The architects, Iktinos and Kolokrates, began in 447 BC, and the building was substantially completed by 432, but work on the decorations continued until at least 431. Some of the financial accounts for the Parthenon survive and show that the largest single expense was transporting the stone from Mount Pentelicus, about 16 kilometers from Athens, to the Acropolis. The funds were partly drawn from the treasury of the Delian League, which was moved from the Panhellenic Sanctuary at Delos to the Acropolis in 454 BC. Architecture The Parthenon is a peripteral octostyle Doric temple with Ionic architectural features. It stands on a platform or stylobate of three steps. In common with other Greek temples, it is of post and lintel construction and is surrounded by columns carrying an entablature. There are eight columns at either end and seventeen on the sides. There is a double row of columns at either end. The colonnade surrounds an inner masonry structure, the cellar which is divided into two compartments. At either end of the building the gable is finished with a triangular pediment originally filled with sculpture. The columns are of the Doric order, with simple capitals, fluted shafts and no bases. Above the architrave of the entablature is a frieze of carved pictorial panels, separated by formal architectural triglyphs, typical of the Doric order. Around the cellar and across the lintels of the inner columns runs a continuous sculptured frieze in low relief. This element of the architecture is Ionic in style, rather than Doric. Measured at the stylobate, the dimensions of the base of the Parthenon are 69.5 meters by 30.9 meters. The cellar was 29.8 meters long by 19.2 meters wide, with internal colonnades in two tiers, structurally necessary to support the roof. On the exterior, the Doric columns measure 1.9 meters in diameter and are 10.4 meters high. The corner columns are slightly larger in diameter. The Parthenon had 46 outer pillars and 23 inner pillars in total. Each pillar containing 20 flutes each. The stylobate has an upward curvature towards its center of 60 millimeters on the east and west ends, and of 110 millimeters on the sides. The roof was covered with large overlapping marble tiles known as embrasures and taguli. The Parthenon is regarded as the finest example of Greek architecture. The temple, wrote John Julius Cooper, enjoys the reputation of being the most perfect Doric temple ever built. Even in antiquity, its architectural refinements were legendary, especially the subtle correspondence between the curvature of the stylobate, the taper of the nose walls and the entasis of the columns. Entesis refers to the slight diminution in diameter of the columns as they rise, though the observable effect on the Parthenon is considerably more subtle than on earlier temples. The stylobate is the platform on which the columns stand. As in many other classical Greek temples, it has a slight parabolic upward curvature intended to shed rainwater and reinforce the building against earthquakes. The columns might therefore be supposed to lean outwards, but they actually leaned slightly inwards so that if they carried on, they would meet almost exactly a mile above the center of the Parthenon. Since they are all the same height, the curvature of the outer stylobate edge is transmitted to the architrave and roof above, all follow the rule of being built to delicate curves, Gorham Stevens observed when pointing out that, in addition, the west front was built at a slightly higher level than that of the east front. It is not universally agreed what the intended effect of these optical refinements was. They may serve as a sort of reverse optical illusion. As the Greeks may have been aware, two parallel lines appear to bow, or curve outward, when intersected by converging lines. In this case, the ceiling and floor of the temple may seem to bow in the presence of the surrounding angles of the building. Striving for perfection, the designers may have added these curves, compensating for the illusion by creating their own curves, 
thus negating this effect and allowing the temple to be seen as they intended. It is also suggested that it was to enliven what might have appeared an inert mass in the case of a building without curves, but the comparison ought to be with the Parthenon's more obviously curved predecessors than with a notional rectilinear temple. Some studies of the Acropolis, including the Parthenon, conclude that many of its proportions approximate the golden ratio. The Parthenon's four-section aid as well as elements of its four-section aid and elsewhere can be circumscribed by golden rectangles. This view that the golden ratio was employed in the design has been disputed in more recent studies. Sculpture The cell of the Parthenon housed the Tricellophantine statue of Athena Parthena sculpted by Phidias and dedicated in 439 or 438 BC. The decorative stonework was originally highly colored. The temple was dedicated to Athena at that time, though construction continued until almost the beginning of the Peloponnesian War in 432. By the year 438, the sculptural decoration of the Doric metopes on the frieze above the exterior colonnade, and of the Ionic frieze around the upper portion of the walls of the cellar, had been completed. The richness of the Parthenon's frieze and metope decoration is in agreement with the function of the temple as a treasury. In the Apis the Domus was stored the monetary contributions of the Delian League, of which Athens was the leading member. Metopes The frieze of the Parthenon's entablature contained 92 metopes. They were carved in high relief, a practice employed until then only in treasuries. According to the building records, the metope sculptures date to the years 446 a Euro 440 a BC. Their design is attributed to the sculptor Kalamis. The metopes of the east side of the Parthenon, above the main entrance, depict the Gig and Tormaki. The metopes of the west end show Amas and Ormaki. The metopes of the south side show the Thessalian Centaur Ormaki. Metopes 13 a Euro 21 are missing, but drawings from 1674 attributed to Jack Carey indicate a series of humans. These have been variously interpreted as scenes from the Lapith wedding scenes from the early history of Athens and various myths. On the north side of the Parthenon, the metopes are poorly preserved, but the subject seems to be the sack of Troy. The metopes present examples of the severe style in the anatomy of the figures' heads, in the limitation of the corporal movements to the contours and not to the muscles, and in the presence of pronounced veins in the figures of the centaur Omaki. Several of the metopes still remain on the building, but, with the exception of those on the northern side, they are severely damaged. Some of them are located at the Acropolis Museum, others are in the British Museum, and one is at the Louvre Museum. In March 2011, archaeologists announced that they had discovered five metopes of the Parthenon in the south wall of the Acropolis, which had been extended when the Acropolis was used as a fortress. According to Elphirotipia Daily, the archaeologists claimed the metopes had been placed there in the 18th century, when the Acropolis wall was being repaired. The experts discovered the metopes, while processing 2250 photos with modern photographic methods, as the white pentelic marble they are made of differed from the other stone of the wall. It was previously presumed that the missing metopes were destroyed during the Morosni explosion of the Parthenon, in 1687. Freeze. The most characteristic feature in the architecture and decoration of the temple is the ionic frieze running around the exterior walls of the cellar, which is the inside structure of the Parthenon. The bas-relief frieze was carved in situ. It is dated in 442 or BC 438 or BC. One interpretation is that it depicts an idealized version of the Panathenaic procession from the Dipolon Gate in the Karameikos to the Acropolis. In this procession held every year, with a special procession taking place every four years, Athenians and foreigners were participating to honor the goddess Athena, offering sacrifices and a new peplos. Joan Breton Connolly has recently argued for another interpretation of the frieze, in which she attempts to prove that the iconography of the frieze is based on Greek mythology. This interpretation postulates that the scenes depict the sacrifice of Pandora, youngest daughter of Erechtheus, to Athena. This human sacrifice was demanded by Athena to save the city from Eumolpus, king of Eleusis, who had gathered an army to attack Athens. Pediments, the second-century traveller Pausanias, when he visited the Acropolis at the end of the second century AD, 
only mention briefly the sculptures of the pediments of the temple, reserving the majority of his description for the gold and ivory statue of the goddess inside. East Pediment The East Pediment narrates the birth of Athena from the head of her father, Zeus. According to Greek mythology, Zeus gave birth to Athena after a terrible headache prompted him to summon Hephaestus' assistance. To alleviate the pain, he ordered Hephaestus to strike him with his forging hammer, and when he did, Zeus's head split open and out popped the goddess Athena in full armor. The sculptural arrangement depicts the moment of Athena's birth. Unfortunately, the centerpieces of the pediment were destroyed even before Jacques Carey created otherwise useful documentary drawings in 1674, so all reconstructions are subject to conjecture and speculation. The main Olympian gods must have stood around Zeus and Athena watching the wondrous event, with Hephaestus and Hera probably near them. The Carey drawings are instrumental in reconstructing the sculptural arrangement beyond the center figures to the north and south. West Pediment The West Pediment faced the Papyleia and depicted the contest between Athena and Poseidon during their competition for the honor of becoming the city's patron. Athena and Poseidon appear at the center of the composition, diverging from one another in strong diagonal forms, with the goddess holding the olive tree and the god of the sea raising his trident to strike the earth. At their flanks, they are framed by two active groups of horses pulling chariots, while a crowd of legendary personalities from Athenian mythology fills the space out to the acute corners of the pediment. The work on the pediments lasted from 438 to 432 BC, and the sculptures of the Parthenon pediments are some of the finest examples of classical Greek art. The figures are sculpted in natural movement with bodies full of vital energy that bursts through their flesh, as the flesh in turn bursts through their thin clothing. The thin chitons reveal the body underneath as the focus of the composition. The distinction between gods and humans is blurred in the conceptual interplay between the idealism and naturalism bestowed on the stone by the sculptors. The pediments no longer exist. Athena Parthenos The only piece of sculpture from the Parthenon known to be from the hand of Phidias was the statue of Athena housed in the Norse. This massive tricellophantine sculpture is now lost and known only from copies, vase painting, gems, literary descriptions and coins. Later history, late antiquity. A major fire broke out in the Parthenon shortly after the middle of the 3rd century AD which destroyed the Parthenon's roof and much of the sanctuary's interior. Repairs were made in the 4th century AD, possibly during the reign of Julian the Apostate. A new wooden roof overlaid with clay tiles was installed to cover the sanctuary. It sloped at a greater incline than the original roof and left the building's wings exposed. The Parthenon survived as a temple dedicated to Athena for close to a thousand years until Theodosius II decreed in 435 AD that all pagan temples in the Byzantine Empire be closed. At some point in the 5th century, Athena's great cult image was looted by one of the emperors and taken to Constantinople where it was later destroyed, possibly during the siege of Constantinople during the Fourth Crusade in 1204 AD. Christian Church The Parthenon was converted into a Christian church in the final decade of the 6th century AD to become the Church of the Parthenus Maria, or the Church of the Theotokos. The orientation of the building was changed to face towards the east. The main entrance was placed at the building's western end and the Christian altar and iconostasis were situated towards the building's eastern side adjacent to an apse built where the temple's pronours was formerly located. A large central portal with surrounding side doors was made in the wall dividing the cellar, which became the church's nave, from the rear chamber, the church's narthex. The spaces between the columns of the apice the domus and the peristyle were walled up though a number of doorways still permitted access. Icons were painted on the walls and many Christian inscriptions were carved into the Parthenon's columns. These renovations inevitably led to the removal and dispersal of some of the sculptures. Those depicting gods were either possibly reinterpreted according to a Christian theme, or removed and destroyed. The Parthenon became the fourth most important Christian pilgrimage destination in the Eastern Roman Empire after Constantinople, Ephesus and Thessalonica. In 1018, 
the Emperor Basil II went on a pilgrimage to Athens directly after his final victory over the Bulgarians for the sole purpose of worshipping at the Parthenon. In medieval Greek accounts it is called the Temple of Theotokos Athenia Tissa and often indirectly referred to, as famous without explaining exactly which temple they were referring to, thus establishing that it was indeed well known. At the time of the Latin occupation, it became for about 250 years a Roman Catholic Church of Our Lady. During this period a tower, used either as a watchtower or bell tower, containing a spiral staircase was constructed at the southwest corner of the cellar and vaulted tombs were built beneath the Parthenon's floor. Islamic Mosque, in 1456, Ottoman Turkish forces invaded Athens and laid siege to a Florentine army defending the Acropolis until June 1458, when it surrendered to the Turks. The Turks may have briefly restored the Parthenon to the Greek Orthodox Christians for continued use as a church. Sometime before the close of the 15th century the Parthenon became a mosque. The precise circumstances under which the Turks appropriated it for use as a mosque are unclear. One account states that Nehem II ordered its conversion as punishment for an Athenian plot against Ottoman rule. The apse became a marab, the tower previously constructed during the Roman Catholic occupation of the Parthenon was extended upwards to become a minaret, a minbar was installed, the Christian altar and iconostasis were removed, and the walls were whitewashed to cover icons of Christian saints along with other Christian imagery. Despite the alterations accompanying the Parthenon's conversion into a church and subsequently a mosque, its structure had remained basically intact. In 1667 the Turkish traveller of the Elbi expressed marvel at the Parthenon's sculptures and figuratively described the building as like some impregnable fortress not made by human agency. He composed a poetic supplication that it, as a work less of human hands than of heaven itself, should remain standing for all time. The French artist Jacques Carey in 1674 visited the Acropolis and sketched the Parthenon's sculptural decorations. Early in 1687, an engineer named Plantier sketched the Parthenon for the Frenchman Gravias d'Ar Euro unregistered trademark or Charez. These depictions, particularly those made by Carey, provide important, and sometimes the only, evidence of the condition of the Parthenon and its various sculptures prior to the devastation it suffered in late 1687 and the subsequent looting of its art objects. Destruction In 1687, the Parthenon was extensively damaged in the greatest catastrophe to befall it in its long history. The Venetians sent an expedition led by Francesco Morosni to attack Athens and capture the Acropolis. The Ottoman Turks fortified the Acropolis and used the Parthenon as a gunpowder magazine a euro despite having been forewarned of the dangers of this use by the 1656 explosion that severely damaged the Propylaia euro, and as a shelter for members of the local Turkish community. On September 26 the Venetian mortar round, fired from the hill of Philippapus, blew up the magazine, and the building was partly destroyed. The explosion blew out the building's central portion and caused the cellar's walls to crumble into rubble. Greek architect and archaeologist Cornelia Chaucer-Slani writes that three of the sanctuary Euro unregistered trademark S4 walls nearly collapsed and three-fifths of the sculptures from the frieze fell. Nothing of the roof apparently remained in place. Six columns from the south side fell, eight from the north, as well as whatever remained from eastern porch except for one column. The columns brought down with them the enormous marble architraves, triglyphs and metopes. About 300 people were killed in the explosion, which showered marble fragments over nearby Turkish defenders and caused large fires that burned until the following day and consumed many homes. Accounts written at the time conflict over whether this destruction was deliberate or accidental. One such account, written by the German officer Sabi Evelski, states that a Turkish deserter revealed to Morosni the use to which the Turks had put the Parthenon expecting that the Venetians would not target a building of such historic importance. Morosni was said to have responded by directing his artillery to aim at the Parthenon. Subsequently Morosni sought to loot sculptures from the ruin and caused further damage in the process. Sculptures of Poseidon and Athena's horses fell to the ground and smashed as his soldiers tried to detach them from the building's west pediment. The following year, 
the Venetians abandoned Athens to avoid a confrontation with a large force the Turks had assembled at Chalcis. At that time, the Venetians had considered blowing up what remained of the Parthenon along with the rest of the Acropolis to deny its further use as a fortification to the Turks, but that idea was not pursued. After the Turks had recaptured the Acropolis they used some of the rubble produced by this explosion to erect a smaller mosque within the shell of the ruined Parthenon. For the next century and a half, portions of the remaining structure were looted for building material and any remaining objects of value. The 18th century was a period of Ottoman stagnation. As a result, many more Europeans found access to Athens, and the picturesque ruins of the Parthenon were much drawn and painted, spurring a rise in Philhellenism and helping to arouse sympathy in Britain and France for Greek independence. Amongst those early travellers and archaeologists were James Stewart and Nicholas Revit, who were commissioned by the Society of Dilettanti to survey the ruins of classical Athens. What they produced was the first measured drawings of the Parthenon published in 1787 in the second volume of Antiquities of Athens measured and delineated. In 1801, the British ambassador at Constantinople, the Earl of Elgin, obtained a questionable firman firman from the Sultan, which existence or legitimacy has not been proved until today, to make casts and drawings of the antiquities on the Acropolis, to demolish recent buildings if this was necessary to view the antiquities, and to remove sculptures from them. Independent Greece When independent Greece gained control of Athens in 1832, the visible section of the minaret was demolished. Only its base and spiral staircase up to the level of the architrave remain intact. Soon all the medieval and Ottoman buildings on the Acropolis were destroyed. However the image of the small mosque within the Parthenon cellar has been preserved in Jolie de Lopinieri's photograph, published in Labours's Excursions Daguerians in 1842, the first photograph of the Acropolis. The area became a historical precinct controlled by the Greek government. Today it attracts millions of tourists every year, who travel up the path at the western end of the Acropolis, through the restored Propylae, and up the Panathnic Way to the Parthenon, which is surrounded by a low fence to prevent damage. Dispute over the marbles The dispute centers around the Parthenon marbles removed by the Earl of Elgin, which are in the British Museum. A few sculptures from the Parthenon are also in the Louvre in Paris, in Copenhagen, and elsewhere but over 50% are in the Acropolis Museum in Athens. A few can still be seen on the building itself. The Greek government has campaigned since 1983 for the British Museum to return the sculptures to Greece. The British Museum has steadfastly refused to return the sculptures, and successive British governments have been unwilling to force the museum to do so. Nevertheless, talks between senior representatives from Greek and British cultural ministries and their legal advisers took place in London on May 4, 2007. These were the first serious negotiations for several years, and there were hopes that the two sides may move a step closer to a resolution. Reconstruction In 1975, the Greek government began a concerted effort to restore the Parthenon and other Acropolis structures. After some delay a committee for the conservation of the Acropolis monuments was established in 1983. The project later attracted funding and technical assistance from the European Union. An archaeological committee thoroughly documented every artifact remaining on the site, and architects assisted with computer models to determine their original locations. Particularly important and fragile sculptures were transferred to the Acropolis Museum. A crane was installed for moving marble blocks. The crane was designed to fold away beneath the roof limb when not in use. In some cases, prior reconstruction was found to be incorrect. These were dismantled, and a careful process of restoration began. Originally, various blocks were held together by elongated iron H pins that were completely coated in lead, which protected the iron from corrosion. Stabilizing pins added in the 19th century were not so coated, and corroded. Since the corrosion product is expansive, the expansion caused further damage by cracking the marble. All new metalwork uses titanium, a strong, light, and corrosion-resistant material. The Parthenon will not be restored to a pre-1687 state, but the explosion damage will be mitigated as much as possible, 
both in the interest of restoring the structural integrity of the edifice and to restore the aesthetic integrity by filling in chipped sections of column drums and lintels, using precisely sculpted marble cemented in place. New pentelic marble is being used from the original quarry. Ultimately, almost all major pieces of marble will be placed in the structure where they originally would have been, supported as needed by modern materials. While the repairs initially show as white against the weathered tan of original surfaces, they will become less prominent as they age. See also, Ancient Greek Architecture, Ancient Greek Temple, List of Ancient Greek Temples, List of Megalithic Sites, National Monument of Scotland, Edinburgh, Walhalla Temple Regensburg a Euro exterior modelled on the Parthenon, but interior is a Hall of Fame for distinguished Germans, Parthenon, Nashville a Euro full-scale replica, Notes. References. Printed sources. Online sources. Further reading. External links. The Acropolis of Athens, The Parthenon, Hellenic Ministry of Culture, The Acropolis Restoration Project, Hellenic Ministry of Culture, The Parthenon Frieze, UNESCO World Heritage Center Euro Acropolis, Athens, Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County Euro The Parthenon. Google SketchUp 3D Model of Parthenon, Parthenon Virtual Tour Interactive 360 degree panoramas in high resolution. The Athenian Acropolis by Livio C. Steccini, The Friends of the Acropolis, Illustrated Parthenon Marbles A Euro Dr. Janice Siegel, Department of Classics, Hampton Sydney College, Virginia, Parthenon, Description, Photo Album, Videos A Wikimedia Video of the Main Sites of the Athenian Acropolis, Secrets of the Parthenon Video by Public Broadcasting Service, on YouTube, Parthenon by Costas Gavras, The History of Acropolis and Parthenon from the Greek TV show I, IOIII plus or minus I one half I registered trademark I, 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 I nanowatt IOI one half I, I.